Hello everybody and welcome to Wiki Weekends. I am your host for this episode, Lucas Holland, and as always, I am joined by Carl Smallwood. Hello, I am Carl Smallwood. And you're not lovely for me today because I couldn't get my camera working, so we're on just like a voice call on Discord and I can't see you anymore. No, we can't see each other. Like me and Lucas, fun fact, we record these videos looking into each other's eyes. <laughs> I don't have those eyes to stare into today. I just have a blank wiki, well, not blank, just a... A fucking wall of text in front of me because, of course, we are reading a wiki entry to use as a jumping off point for a discussion. And, Carl, this week I have chosen something that, you know, is making a bit of a resurgence once again. Okay, so that could mean many things. It so could. Can I have a clue? More of a clue than that. Um, yes, it is a staple of British television. Is it Doctor Who? It is, of course, Doctor Who. Yes. We're just talking about Doctor Who in general as a television show. Um, we can obviously, like, maybe if people, you know, enjoy hearing about Doctor Who, we can get more into the weeds of things and talk about how stupid the Daleks are, but... Oh, the Daleks are the best! The Daleks any... are the best, but in like, Doctor Who's the best in the most, like, kind of stupid, endearing way. Doctor Who, I think it's like the quintessential British cultural export because <laughs> Britain is a bit shit. Yeah. That's the thing. Britain's a bit shit. So remember when we had like our Olympics and it's like, we're not going to compete with China in terms of like firework displays because they literally oh, yeah. invented fireworks. What are we going to do? And it's like, why don't we just have just like nurses running around reading bedtime stories? And it's like, okay, I'll do. <laughs> Other than maybe Mr. Bean, I would argue, yeah, Doctor Who is one of our best exports, and obviously, like, the Beatles, that's not current anymore, I'm not talking about the Beatles and this. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, it's been great since, what, the 60s, is it? Um, it? It is a British science fiction television series broadcast by the BBC since 1963. So it could be one of the longest running, like, um, uh, like television serials, like, 1960s, that's like nearly nigh on 60 years. It did take a rather big hiatus, though, didn't it? No, it's just the Doctor was regenerating. It took a lot of time to become uh, Christopher <laughs> Eccleston. It's like 1963 to 1989 had 26 seasons, and then 13 seasons from 2005 to present. And there was also, like, another uh, film in the middle, just, like, before the, the 2005 one came back with uh, Christopher mm -hmm. Eccleston. I think you mean Malaketh from Thor the Dark World. <laughs> of course, his most iconic performance. <laughs> What's more iconic, Malaketh or um, uh, David Tennant? Oh no, um, uh, is it Matt... Matt Smith dancing to I Have Sex in Morbius. Oh, God. What's, what's more iconic? I mean, more iconic is, I would argue, Matt Smith. At least that took over for a meme for a while. Yeah. I find it so funny because I remember, like, around the time, it was like, oh, cool, they're getting Christopher Eccleston as a villain. That's going to be, like, super interesting. And it was, like, the most non-character in all of Marvel. Have you heard as well? Like Christopher Eccleston's like a really serious stage actor. He fucking hates being Doctor Who. <laughs> he hates being well, Doctor Who and he hated being in Marvel and just moaning the entire time. I think nowadays he's like, I think he started appearing back in like conventions of a Doctor Who and stuff and kind of gaining a bit more of an appreciation for how much the fans really enjoy him in that role. But for a long time, he was like, fuck off, I don't want to talk about it. The thing is, as soon as he interacts with Doctor Who fans, I get it. I mean, as far as I can tell, it's one of the nicer, like, fan bases. I think it is, but it's just one of those things of like, when people are like, oh, it's so good. It's like, how many episodes is there? It's like 8,000. I went, no, thank you. <laughs> it's it's one piece all over again. I think as well, I also got really put off by um, like the Matt Smith era, the Doctor. Like the Doctor's so wacky and kooky. I need fish fingers and custard. I mean, if you go back to the sixties, though, he was wacky and he, kooky, he was. right? I appreciate it as a cultural export. It's just one of those shows I always bounce off it. Every time I try to watch it, I try mm. to bounce off. I've watched all of it up until Peter, Co 
Peter Capaldi became the Doctor. Mm-hmm. We think he's like the twelfth Doctor. And then I've watched bits and pieces of that, and then um, some of the Jodie Whittaker episodes as well. But I mean, even by the point of like the Matt Smith era, a lot of the writing had just gone so downhill. I'm a time traveler. I've probably time traveled more than anyone else. Meaning? Meaning. My grave is potentially the most dangerous place in the universe. But some of it's good though. Like there are like it, it, there, are, the, there are individual episodes that I really enjoy. But as a general consensus, like I think pretty much Stephen Moffat just like slowly burned it down. Yeah, it's like there's the Chris Rex ones, the World War Two Christmas episode that I quite like, which usually aired at Christmas. Like they re-air mm-hmm. it at Christmas a lot. Uh, obviously, the Weeping Angels episode, which everyone always says like, yeah, that episode kicks ass. Like the original Don't Blink episode does, but then I really think that you know they kind of ruined the Weeping Angels over time as well. They kept bringing them back, and they kept just doing a worse job of bringing them back than Don't Blink because Don't mm-hmm. Blink was such a good episode. Yeah, made on a budget. Someone in the comments was like, you know they made that because they ran out of budget, right? And they need a Yeah, you can didn't. fucking tell it's two people sat in a video store watching like reruns of just uh, David Tennant reading a script on a camera. Yeah. This guy. Sorry, the pause thing keeps slipping. Stupid thing. Last night at Kathy's, you had him on all those screens, that same guy. Talking about, I don't know, blinking or something. Yeah, the bit about the blinking is great. He's like, we need an episode. We need a villain that literally doesn't move. It's a statue <laughs> done. It's, the thing is, though, that's why I think it's like the charm, like I said, quintessentially British of it's a bit shit. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why when you look at the Dalek, the death ray, aka the plunger. <laughs> the plunger and a whisk. I still never forget that episode of like Doctor Who, where there's like an like it, I remember it was like the cliffhanger to an episode is the Dalek flying up a flight of stairs, and it just and that's the <laughs> cliffhanger for the episode. <laughs> it's like the Doctor runs up a flight of stairs. Like, don't worry, they can't climb stairs. And the cliffhanger is the Dalek just gets a jetpack and starts flying like, it's, no! so slowly as well. It's the ultimate example, though, of as long as the actors sell it, you can have anything. I mean, there were literally like bin bag monsters in the originals, right? Oh, bin, yeah, bin bag monsters. Like, that's the, I mean, because Doctor Who, one of the things they do is like, because it's the BBC, and the BBC has like a lot of stuff in storage. The, the people making episodes go down, okay, what do we have? Mm-hmm. Here's some world, we've got some World War II stuff. Okay, the Doctor goes back, and because the Doctor can travel through time. Just fuck it, it goes to World War II times because we've got a bunch of extras who can dress like World War II characters. Yeah, and of course, for anyone that doesn't know what Doctor Who is, Mm -hmm. I'll just give a a brief rundown here. The series depicts the adventures of a Time Lord called The Doctor, an extraterrestrial being who appears to be human because, you know, it costs a lot of (laughs) makeup to make him not human. The Doctor explores the universe in a time-travelling spaceship called the TARDIS, and Carl, you just looked up for us what the TARDIS stands for. Yeah, I did, but I shut the, I shut the tab because I didn't know we were re-recording this line. It stands for Time and Relative <laughs> Dimension in Space. It does, thank you. Thank you for remembering that bit. Uh, the TARDIS exterior appears as a blue British police box, which was a common sight in Britain in 1963 when the series first aired. See, Joey, very... it should be now. It should be, it should be a, a phone box with a homeless person pissing in it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a more common sight on the British high street. Because it is, it is really like um, a funny little remnant of the fact that this came out in the sixties. Is fun fact, you know, it was a, apparently a common thing back in the sixties. But British police boxes don't exist. When he goes forward in time, it's like, well, what the fuck is this? It's like, well, it's a box to blend in with our environment. Like they're everywhere. It's like panning around to twenty twenty three Britain. It's like they're nowhere. They don't exist. Yeah, but it's uh, very funny to me as well of like when you see tourists come to Britain and they take pictures of post boxes because I think post boxes might be the only like classic like Britishism. We like we still have red post boxes and double decker buses, but like phone boxes don't look like they used to anymore, do they? Like, I mean, they're just like the, these weird the, plast- plastic abominations. The red phone boxes still exist every now and then. Like there is a couple across Liverpool, but again, they're normally just like filled with fucking yeah. Like people have a shack in there or something like that. Just <laughs> the thing is someone that, taking a dump is like, I, yeah. Every now and again, I go look. It was like the picture that sums up Britain. 
and it's like Manchester at two o'clock in the morning, and it's a guy passed out in the gutter with the police helping him up, and just on the floor is a man who's dropped his kebab, and it's like, that's Britain. <laughs> it's like, that's Britain. It's just one of those funny things of like, I guess, yeah, they could have updated it over time with like maybe the new one having like the red phone boxes, but again, that's not really a common sight anymore, at least not one without being like, you know, torn down. It's funny because now the only thing people think of when they see the British police box is literally the Doctor. But yeah, the Doctor, with the help of various companions, combats foes, works to save civilizations and helps people in need. And I think a lot of the time, those are kind of my favourite ones of just, like, the Doctor helping out someone. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really good for, like, those standalone episodes of just, like, here's a, a fun problem for him to solve. Like, mm-hmm. They're almost like Sherlock Holmes stories in a way, aren't they? Of, like, it's this, a really smart person just comes in and solves a problem nobody else could in a satisfying way. It's over. Accept that. I'm not winding you up. Yeah, getting to watch the Doctor come up with these clever, you know, ideas or contraptions or whatever. I think it's, like, quite boring when it's just, oh, here's another one with, like, the Cybermen and the Daleks and all that shit. And it's, like, I think in it was the Matt Smith era where it was every single enemy that the Doctor had ever fought all came together to stop the Doctor. Could you all just stay still a minute because... Oh! It's way more fun when it's just these like weird, silly little spin-off episodes to me. It's it's still it's like all it should be is I want like you know well regarded Shakespearean actors like we've got these thespians like David Tennant and stuff being said and I want David I want David Tennant reacting to a man covered in bin bags. <laughs> the better the CGI gets, the less interested I am in the show. I want like remember like K9, which was just like yes. a remote control plastic dog that followed a doctor around. <laughs> I want that shit. That's why I like the Daleks so much. It's like every enemy should be that. Yeah, I mean like obviously the the Daleks have become this other thing that like, you know, over time they've become like these just incredibly powerful villains of the doctors and they can mm-hmm no longer be defeated by a simple staircase, but... Yeah, it's I always like feel the, the, the Cybermen, anyway, always kick more ass. Well, it's funny just because, you know, one of the, the more iconic episodes in the modern times is the uh, the Battle of Canary Wharf set of episodes, where it's the Cybermen versus the Daleks, and it's like, you go from like, oh, well, there's one Dalek kicking the Doctor's ass, and then, you know, slowly going up a set of, ser- set of stairs... And then it just pans to, like, them creating an infinite amount of Daleks flying around London, just yeah, zapping the shit out Cybermen. How many Daleks? Millions. Are you familiar with this, this the trope that has a name for? There's a name for that trope, I should say. Um, no, I'm not, no. It is the law of reverse ninjutsu. So... <laughs> like in a movie or a TV show, if you fight, if one ninja drops down from the ceiling and challenges it with sword dung, that will be like the hardest fight you'll ever have. If fifty ninjas <laughs> confront you, you will go through them like tissue paper. And it's like the mm-hmm. more Daleks there are, the less threatening they are, because obviously now you can just have Daleks getting torn apart. Yeah. Same like um, Iron Man, isn't it? In the first Iron Man movie, he takes a tank shell to the face, and then in Iron Man three, you've just got people with like in slightly buff people ripping them apart with their bare hands. We've got hot arms, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to chop like three Iron Men in half in one go. All you need to do in that situation, right, if you've got like the extremis on your hands, Mm -hmm. is you just heat up those arms and just do like the Mike Haggard double lariat and just twirl. Like, How are you stopping that? You can't. Other than, you know, I imagine shooting a missile in the face, but then they'll just grow back. So that was always the weird thing to me in that is like, okay, well, does he want to kill these people? Because realistically, they're all just like, like a lot of them were seen as like war veterans and shit that would yeah. just wanted their arm back. And it's like, you know, we must murder all the evil people. <laughs> it's like, ah. Uh... No, but anyway, we're not talking about Iron Man 3. We are talking yeah. about Doctor Who. The series is a significant part of popular culture in Britain, and elsewhere it has gained a cult following. 
Yeah, like, it's one of those things. It's like I remember it got really big on Sherlock, and you had like it was called the mm. Super Who Lock fandom, which is supernatural <laughs> Sherlock and Doctor Who, and it's like we're gonna just create the most annoying fan base possible. <laughs> I guess there is like a lot of crossover in those fan bases. It's just it it's, makes, no, the crossover is with... hot dudes are the main character. Yeah, like, yeah. I, think... I was about to say it makes more sense with like Supernatural and Doctor Who, but I guess just like the Sherlock thing of like attractive man is very clever and solves problems. It's three shows led by floppy um, brunette, floppy haired brunette fit men. So yeah. I can't imagine being like one of those girls who's obsessed with like um, Doctor Who when the Peter Capaldi era started. <laughs> and it's just not. And I bet as well they were like, this isn't Doctor Who. Then you go back like 40 years and you look at Tom Baker fucking swanning around like a knobhead. Yeah. Like Doctor Who was always like just a weird old man. Yeah, it normally was a weird old man. And yeah, in just really flamboyant clothing and eating jelly beans. <laughs> yeah. And I do like that each Doctor does have their eccentricities. It's always the, the fun part. That's why like, Jodie Whittaker was such an interesting one. Like, because we had David Tennant and Matt Smith, which just felt like the same guy. Like Matt Smith felt like David Tennant, but like um, uh, he grew up on a planet with like point like one percent less gravity, so he's a bit taller. I mean, he, he grew into his own for he sure. Did. It just they look very similar and they acted quite similarly from the things that I saw. That's mm-hmm. why Peter Capaldi was great. Like, okay, let's go back to a staid, stoic one. Part of me always got a bit upset because um, I can't remember the TV show where um, Peter Capaldi was like the the spinner for the politicians. The thick of it, where he's just swearing it, it up, and swearing was, up a storm. I was waiting for Peter to Capaldi to come in and just like. <laughs> Just make good Doctor Who like the most foul mouthed person possible. Don't fucking get look half an hour ago you wear him with a shot. This is half an hour hence. Well fucking time travel, Jess. Could have done that. It's like when you read those things, isn't it? Like in the the editors for all the Harry Potter books, like Ron used to swear all the time. <laughs> and it's like we could have had him out like, oh my god, it's fucking Voldemort! <laughs> we could have had that. <laughs> Oh dear, and I don't know if you've ever really watched any of like the old um, Doctor Who stuff. I've watched bits of it because it's so quaint. Mm-hmm. Like weirdly enough, a lot of it's lost. I did remember writing an article about um, the fact like some like nearly a hundred episodes of Doctor Who are just missing because the BBC didn't save the tapes. They just um, recorded over stuff back then. Yeah, it says here number of episodes is eight hundred and seventy-three with ninety-seven missing, and presumably they are. All of the the sixties going on era, yeah, and they do turn up every now. I think as of like a couple of months ago, a new one turned up because they keep finding them in like different areas of the world where it was in syndication, or some people stole the tapes, or someone's grandma recorded it on the TV and they find it in the attic, for example. <laughs> yeah, like, there's one. Uh, there's one example where a guy was testing out his camera and was recording like his just the floor, but he recorded the audio for a Doctor Who episode, and then they got that with the original script and animated the episode. Oh my god. And it is really funny to see the perpetual cycle of currently, you know, um, Jodie Whittaker's, you know, online as, like, the bad Doctor at the moment, but it was more that probably she just had shit writing, and um, I think the, the... budget also drastically fell over the last few seasons but um, yeah it's the classic thing isn't it of um oh we're gonna make a woman the doctor we're gonna get a shit budget and shit writing and then when it gets bad reviews blame it on the woman yeah and then um obviously like the newest doctor is shooty gatwa and i've not seen like the new special with them in it um but obviously that's also like bringing back other doctors or something or, like they do every yeah, now Dave, and then david of, like, tennant's like just swanning press around the david tennant button just Send out the signal. Send out the David Tennant signal. It's like, is he doing Hamlet? No, he's got a break. Okay, bring him in. What the hell? We've got a bloody Martian in the shed. Don't look. Meet me. Oh, Christopher Eccleston came back and people were like, oh, I don't know about this guy. Like, Doctor Who coming back, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure I like this new gritty take. And then David Tennant comes along and people are like, well, fuck this floppy herd weirdo. Like, what happened to the good Doctor, like, Christopher Eccleston? It's... Can I introduce you, Lucas, to a concept called nostalgia? Yeah. Is that like, the one, like... Yep. 
so it's many people said- now go Matt Smith is the best Doctor, and have you said that when Matt Smith became the Doctor? You see, Lucas, I like the old thing. I don't like having to get the new thing, because the new thing is not the thing that I already know. Yeah, people just are too quick to jump to I don't like new thing. It's like, no, you're just not used to the new actor. I'm sure when the next actor comes along, you'll think that they're the best actor ever, because the new person is the new one to hate on. No, what it'll be is you'll see the post of maybe we judge them too harshly. Yeah. And it's like, no, maybe you were just a shit. Speaking of just the different Doctors that we've had, um, I've got the list here of just all of the different Doctors, and it did say as well that there was um, the the movie was just like a, a straight-to-television film called Doctor Who, mm-hmm. and that was in uh, 1996. Do I think they need to do? Yeah, Doctor Who needs to be like James Bond. Well, I don't like the, the jokes they just like they randomly announce this is the new Doctor Who. They need mm. to do like all the speculation, like Joe with Bond, where it's always this huge thing about who's going to be the next Bond, and then people start like fan casting. Mm-hmm. So you never really. See, I guess you're probably doing the community or like around Doctor Who, but with it being the- as big a cultural export as Bond, you think there'd be more like discussion around who should be the next Doctor Who? When they get announced, I see well, a lot of talk you could about it. Literally, do like a marketing campaign of like who is Doctor Who? Like you could. It's literally in the name, just, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It would be such an easy thing for the BBC to just be like, oh, Doctor Who? Like, speculate who's going to be... And I'm sure uh, it mentioned earlier that the fan base is known as Whovians. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm sure, as you say, in the fan base, there's plenty of speculation or fan casting going Who on. Who should be the next Doctor Who, yeah. Mm-hmm. But you just don't see it as much. Like, obviously, cause I don't really interact with much James Bond media, but I always see the discussions about who should be the next Bond, like, leaks out into just the wider internet ecosystem. Not so much with Doctor Who, despite, I'd argue, it's just as big a cultural ex- export. Because they have such like, a quick role on Doctor Who, like it's on every year. Like I guess there's less of that, whereas, like you know, I think um, Daniel Craig has been talking for years about how like, I don't want to be the James Bond anymore. He fucking hates being James else. Bond, doesn't he? He fucking yeah. hates it. <laughs> it's like every time I see um, a new Bond film, it's like, Daniel Craig thinks this will be his last James Bond film. He hates being James Bond, and he's in another one. Like he never smiles. He never looks like he's having fun in any one of those movies. It's like he's like driving this like super fancy fast car in this amazing locale and banging the fittest woman in the world, and he just looks so annoyed. <laughs> he's like, "I'll be James Bond, mate. Come on." Yeah, yeah, and it's like, oh, he's got to be gritty and serious because this is serious James Bond time. And I think the first. I think the first one was like Casino Royale and then Quantum Solace, and I was like, okay, I'm kind of on board with like this Bourne esque, like Jason Bourne esque, um, kind of like James Bond take. Just after that, I was like, man, I really miss the goofiness. Like they're not right. as good. Like, I get it. Like you know, those Pierce Brosnan and James Bond movies are shit. No, the thing but, is like, though, the fun again, we, we, and goofy. Yeah, and we wacky. just talked about it. Of like, you go back and you look at it in the nostalgia of it's goofy. Mm-hmm. Like if, and I want the next James Bond to have all sorts of crazy bullshit gadgets in. So like Doctor Who, like the more realistic it gets, the less I'm interested. Like I want to see like bin bag people covered in bin bags <laughs> and Halloween masks. And I was like, this is a new race called the Glee Box. I'm an evil spy. Spy. I think they had that recently. I, I did see like a leak. They got some actor in who's just dressed like a weird bug man. And there's all the behind the scenes stuff and just moonwalking in the outfit. <laughs> so I saw that, that did leak out into, that might actually did get into like my social media. Bubble. I still think, I, I always call it out, but like one of my favourite ones is just the absorbal off. What, what is the absorbal off? What the fuck is that? Ab- um, so who, who played the absorbal off? I can't remember now. I'll look it up now while you tell me more about Doctor Who. What the fuck is that? Yeah, they just had this really awful rubber outfit filled with like faces all yeah. over it right yeah what the and hell it's is like that every time they absorbed a person the absorbal off got like another face just on them oh the actor who played it was peter k that's who it was <laughs> yeah that's what doctor who needs to be Mm-hmm. It needs to be like random British actor because like who doesn't want to be on Doctor Who? Uh, I just love the idea of like yeah, just bring someone in, 
for one episode where they're villain of the week and they're just a dumb thing called the absorber off. That's what it needs to be. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff I love. I think that's what the most recent one is. It's like some weird bug man and it's some <laughs> famous actor who's fucking loving it because he gets to just dress like a bug man with the absorber off. That's amazing. Just Peter Kay hailing from uh, the planet Clom. <laughs> of course. This yeah, is the kind of... You could sh- forget the planet Clom. This is the kind of shit I'm down for. This is I mean. It needs to be worse. Mm-hmm. It needs to be this level of like quality. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it became so much about like um, season long arcs, and even you know, I think it, it pretty much was the entire time with the the more modern ones. Because even uh, I think it was the Christopher Eccleston one. I remember it was uh, Billy Piper, but like the Bad Wolf stuff. <laughs> Myself. I hate modern television's obsession with the season long arc. Mm-hmm. Give me an episode of Peter Kay as the Absorber Long. <laughs> and I'm going to have to give credit to there's a, this concept has been defined. It's called the Surf Dracula problem. Are you familiar with the Surf Dracula problem? I don't think so, no. But it's, okay, it's based on a shit post, but it, it describes a very real phenomenon, an annoying phenomenon with television today. It's at Tofa Florence on um, uh, Twitter. They sem- simply said, back in the day, if you had a TV show called Surf Dracula, You'd see that fool surfing every week in a new adventure. But in the streaming era, the entire first season is a long flashback about how he got the surfboard <laughs> until he surfs for five minutes in the finale and then it gets cancelled. It's very true. And it's that thing of like, it's a joke, but it like just so well encapsulates the streaming era of television of just, it has to, it can't have like 24 episodes of people running around in the woods fighting rubber monsters. It's like eight episode mini series. As much as I am enjoying it, it probably, um, has this problem as well is like um, I'm watching Better Call Saul mm-hmm. and it kind of has that similar thing of like well um, in season 4 would you like the backstory of why Hector Salamanca has a bell on his um, <laughs> l- wheelchair it's like alright or is it going to take 5 seasons for me to realise why he actually stuck with the name Saul Goodman in the end and it's like does this does this need to be built up that much I think though it gets away with that because the shows are just so well made. That's the thing is like I, I'm encountering those problems with that TV show, but it's also just a really well made TV show. It's like they have like one episode opens with five minutes of a character making a cup of coffee, and it's one of the most amazing. Like just Howard making his coffee in the morning, having a conversation with his wife, and I'm like, oh my god, give me an entire season of this. Like that's the thing, it gets away with it because it's very well written, acted, and shot, mm-hmm. but it still has that exact same problem of like. Well, because we're a prequel, everything needs to have a, like a meaning and an answer. Okay, but just going back to Doctor Who, we can talk about like the actual Doctors and the casting. Yes. And um, the serials, The Deadly Assassin in 1976, and Mordrin, Undead, 1983, established that a Time Lord can only regenerate 12 times for a total of 13 incarnations. But of course... They needed to keep Doctor Who going. That's my favourite bit, because they wrote that back in the 60s and thought, well... We can have to probably have 12 seasons out of this, and now we're up to, like, 60 years later, they're having to, like, f- somehow fudge their way around. Because wasn't that, like, the Jodie Whittaker thing? It's like, that's the final transformation. Um, t- t- Jodie Whittaker is the 13th Doctor, yeah. but... Um, we need to bullshit in, way around it, because this continues to earn profit for the BBC. It's the episode of The Time of the Doctor in 2013, which was the Matt Smith episode. It depicted the Doctor acquiring a new cycle of regenerations, <laughs> starting from the 12th Doctor, due to the 11th Doctor being the product of the Doctor's 12th regeneration from his original set. It's a, it just basically is like... A I got don't, told, I don't yeah. want to die, and then he gets new regenerations or some shit. What it is, is just a writer, a writer somewhere was tasked with an executive of make us so we can get 15 more fucking seasons out of this shit. It's one of those funny things of like people are going to come at me in the comments for like misremembering or misrepresenting what happened. It was bullshit that they needed to write, okay? It was poorly written, but it needed to happen for Doctor Who to keep going. And, Here's the thing, like if you yeah. think about defending the plot of Doctor Who, just put the absorber off on screen right now. <laughs> that's what Doctor <laughs> Who is. Like that's the thing. It, you can like it, but it doesn't mean it's very good. Oh, what's the matter? Have you given up so soon? 
and it is good in its own some way. Yeah, that's the, but, it yeah. but like, it's when people defend it of like, no, it actually totally super makes sense. Like it does because they bullshit an explanation literally half a century later. Mm-hmm. And you can say that they bullshit the explanation half a century later and still like the show, but it doesn't mean that the explanation is any less bullshit or ass poy. Until 2017, all depictions were played by men, and then Jodie Whittaker took over the role as the 13th Doctor. It's funny here as well. It's um, That was initially confirmed to be the... Uh, all initially like rumoured to be the 14th Doctor, but it, in fact, David Tennant was confirmed to be the 14th Doctor, because, like, Jodie Whittaker just reincarnates into David Tennant, and then Gatwood becomes the 15th Doctor. So David Tennant's just back as the 14th Doctor. Uh, we start with uh, William Hartnell as the first Doctor, uh, 63 to 66. Patrick Troughton is that second Doctor, 66 to 69. John Pertwee was the third Doctor, 70 to 74. Tom Baker was the fourth Doctor, 74 to 81. And Tom Baker is, I think, the one that nearly everyone remembers as, like, the Doctor. Just touch these two strands together, and the Daleks are finished. Have I that right? Peter Davidson was the fifth Doctor, 82 to 84. Colin Baker, who I believe is Tom Baker's son, was the sixth Doctor from 84 to 86. Uh, Sylvester McCoy was the seventh Doctor, 87 to 89. So that's where the original set of Doctors um, ends. And then Mm -hmm. uh, Paul McGann was the eighth Doctor in the 1996 film. Um, We've got Christopher Eccleston as the ninth Doctor, David Tennant as the tenth, Matt Smith as the eleventh, Peter Capaldi as the twelfth, Jodie Whittaker as the thirteenth, David Tennant as the fourteenth, and Chutie Gatwa as the fifteenth. It's just that idea of David Tennant, like, do you want some more money? Is that (laughs) get some more money? (laughs) And I guess, I guess, does that mean that we can officially say that David Tennant is the most iconic Doctor because the only one who did it twice? He's been twice, yeah. I've been ranting and raving about Doctor Who for a while now, so we can wrap it up there, but I just really enjoy some of the stupid side of Doctor Who. I do enjoy occasionally, like, some of the bigger parts, but yeah, for me, it's just... It's always been, like, those dumb, stupid single episodes that yeah. I really loved about Doctor Who. Like I say, for me, it's like, it's a series that I've not watched before, I'm aware of it via, like, you know, pop culture osmosis, and just the sillier aspects of it, I think, sum up, like, British culture. I like the campiness of it. This, mm-hmm. like, you know, it's a bit shit, but you know what? Britain's a bit shit. <laughs> it is. Thank you, as well as Carl, all of you watching, for joining along for another episode of Wiki Weekends. Hell yeah. I guess you know, like, share, subscribe, do all those lovely things, and let us know in the comments who your favourite Doctor is. No, let us who should play Doctor Who next. <laughs> Daniel Craig, just come in do, do and I, make oh, it that, super serious. That'd be so, jokes like James Bond is always like, who's the sexiest British man? <laughs> like, I think Doctor Who should be who is this, like, you know, the goofiest Britain. So yeah. I think it should be Harry Hill. God. Jesus You Christ. know he'd be a good just Doctor Harry Who. Hill just running around being the Doctor. He'd be a great Doctor Who. You know he'd be a great Doctor Who. Oh, well, every God. every time they regenerate, they should completely change who they are. So, like, you go from Peter Capaldi to um, Harry Hill. And then you go from, like, Harry Hill to um, Daniel Craig. Oh, well, uh, James Corden's just come back from, like, being shooted out of America, right? Do you know what James Corden? He could be the absorbable off. <laughs> <laughs> Make him the absorbable off. Oh, thank you all for watching. Cheers, everybody.